one of the cases involved a young man um, named uh, Mickey Covington. Uh, there was a, a robbery on the east side of Fort Worth on East Lancaster, a Morrison drug, which is a pretty well-known drug at the time. This was, let's see, this was back in 1961. And... Uh, the robber went in to rob the store and got Mr. Morrison to open the safe. And Mr. Morrison opened the safe and the robber was going to uh, empty the safe and Mrs. Morrison came up and slammed the safe shut. And he took his, his pistol and slapped her across the wrist. The pistol went off, hit Mr. and the slug hit Mr. Morrison in the head and killed him. Months later, the police called me one afternoon and they said, hey, we've got a really hot suspect in this case. And so uh, I said, uh, this was about one in the afternoon, I said, well, why don't you just kind of put him on ice and not say anything? Because the afternoon people are, uh, the afternoon reporters are still on duty. And they'll get, I don't want them to have the story. So, uh, you know, that's what happens when you have good connections with the homicide. So they put him on uh, kept him out of sight until three o'clock, and then they brought him out to question me. And there was one thing that really puzzled all of us: his right arm, part of his right arm, was missing. And he had the gun in his right hand originally. And they said, "No, this is a good suspect." So they questioned this guy all afternoon and into the evening. And I'd sit outside and listen. And they 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 just weren't getting any place with Mickey, and Mickey kept saying, uh, "Oh, this would kill my mother if she heard I killed somebody." Well, I called him out about ten o'clock. I said, "You guys got to wrap this up." I says, "I'm starting to push on deadline." Well, when it came a little before midnight, I said, "Hey, uh, I can't wait any longer. Let me have this guy." And they said, do you think you can do any good with him? I said, well, let me, let me see what I can do with him. So they came out, and I went in by myself, and I, I took a Bible with me. Because he kept talking about the Bible, says you can't do this and can't do that. Well, I took the Bible in, and uh, I sat down with Mickey. And an old homicide detective named A.C. Howerton, who was a master interrogator, and he taught me... Uh, a lot about questioning people, not just suspects, but just the way you deal with people. And he's always said that he always watched for somebody to start their palms of their hands off sweating. And he said when their hands starts when they start rubbing their hands, he knew it was close. And often he would just reach over and put his hand on the shoulder and say, Now son or madam, tell me about it. And he said they invariably confessed. So I went in and talked to Mickey. And uh, I said, Mickey, you know, you, you keep saying that uh, you don't, that be terrible for your mother, but you know, if you're lying every time you lie, that's a sin. You're stacking up these sins. This book says you don't lie. And I noticed that one, that left hand, suddenly he start, start, and I said, uh oh, he's getting close. I said, Mickey, you know, you have to go by this. This book wants you to tell the truth. And you've been referring to this book all day. And he says, well, you know, in there in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthews, it says, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. And he says, I shot Mr. Norris, and it was an accident. When that woman uh, slammed the safe, I was just intended to hit her in the face, and the gun went off. And he said, but I, went, I knew my hand had offended thee. He says, I went down to Houston and put my hand on the railroad track. And the rain, train cut it off. Because if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. And that's exactly what I did. Of course, a sensational case. Just in time for my deadline. And, but anyway, he uh, signed the confession. I said, now, Mickey, you don't talk to any reporters but me. All these reporters are going to come out and talk to you tomorrow. You don't trust them. You just tell him Phil Records said you're only talking to him. 